We had a visitor and he brought with himself a hand at the University of Delft they were building. And one day I walked into the lab and I noticed him trying to pick up a um, metal sphere and the sphere kept rolling away. And he said, it's impossible to pick up this sphere with the robotic hands. And I said, come on, I mean, that can't be. You can just walk over and pick up the sphere, no problem. Before soft hands, the hands that were available in robotics were all rigid with a lot of motors inside. And we pushed to the limit this kind of technology. So we thought that we needed a paradigm shift. So we needed something different. This triggered an investigation of how humans actually grasp things. And yeah, that was the seed, uh, the idea of SOMA, because we realized that really humans are manipulating and grasping things in ways that are very different from the way that roboticists had imagined it for 50 years. The main elements that contribute to soft manipulation are the design of the hands, of course, so they need to be uh, robust, preferably economic, so that it makes sense for industries to use these hands into a robotic solution. We have also some other components, so it's very important what we call planning in robotics, which means we have the hand and we have to tell the hand where to go to grasp the object. The traditional paradigm of planning is try to avoid any collision with the environment, go to the object, hover over it, and then grasp it and lift the object. With SOMA, what we try to do is explicitly encourage the interaction with the environment, meaning if there is a table, maybe we can use the table to grasp the object in a more efficient way without having to rely on a very precise perception system. And most of the times, you need additional information, like for instance, the geometrical model of the object to be able to grasp it. And that, as you can imagine, in the case of fruits and vegetables, just doesn't exist. And then we built this project, we built this proposal, and then we, we handed it over to the, to the European Commission. They liked the idea because they said, yes, I mean, this looks promising, but, uh, but good luck because it's, it's very challenging. And we said, challenge accepted. The SOMA Consortium has seven partners. Every partner has brought some specific knowledge into the equation, and then we have combined this knowledge to try to advance the state of the art in robotic manipulation. In some sense, we recruited the best team. And with such a team, I think it was very difficult to fail. It was like a penalty uh, to, to kick. At the beginning of the project, we decided um, let's go back to the roots and observe how nature actually works. How do we actually perform a grasp? We literally recorded thousands of different grasping trials. So we observe how humans grasp different objects in different experimental conditions. What happened in the past is that the robot approached the object without taking the environment into account. And then grasping it like this, compared to this, what we do is very simple. I use the environment, then I simply close the fingers and the environment guides my movement, and then the object ends up in my hand. We can use the human behavior as an inspiration, but uh, to make it an inspiration that we can effectively use, we need to study it and to model it using mathematics. So to model actually how they are deforming is a difficult task. So we extended them with different sensor possibilities like the strain sensors or these tactile sensors for the tactile feedback. The technology that we initially used to get the sense of touch was a simple technology that we have also in our mobile phones like accelerometer. So in the SOMA project, we are using these soft pneumatic fingers and in the RBO hand we have these new flex actuators and they basically work by inflating the finger, uh, the finger starts bending, even while it's inflated it's still very flexible. So uh, this of course helps us to pick up uh, delicate and soft objects but it also comes with challenges and some of the challenges I'm tackling here is the sensorization. So we, what we do is we actually put a small microphone at the base of the finger in the inside and then whenever something touches the finger 
we're able to pick up the sound of that contact and can actually localize it because the sound is different if we touch the finger at different positions. And the benefit of using a microphone like this is that it's very cheap and simple to include in the finger. All we need is this one small little microphone in here and then we basically have the whole finger sensorized. So here, this is the soft end, the father of the family of the soft ends that we would see here. And uh, as you can see inside, the soft end is made of uh, components that are not rigidly connected one to the other, but can, uh, can bend sideways. So in this, uh, with, together with the differential mechanism, which is inside of the hand, makes the hand uh, adapt to a different shape of the object. So when you close the hand, the fingers stop moving when they find an obstacle. And so all the other fingers keep moving and adapt to the shape of the object. So you can see, you can grasp a sphere. You can grasp uh, this uh, strange shaped object. And uh, depending on how you grasp it, the shape of the fingers changes. So this is uh, another uh, technology developed uh, in, in the project. So the user can check which is the object that uh, he wants to grasp and can, for instance, reorient the fingers. These buttons control the open close of the end. So for instance, I can press this and the end closes. Then I can stop and I can open again. Another interesting uh, feature of this device is that it is completely wireless. So there is a, a battery on board. People working like plumbers, they need uh, an, another end to do something. They can plug the end uh, in the wall and uh, use the interface to, con to control it, hold uh, a long pipe together or do something in collaboration. In the future, I see many hands developed on soft manipulation because most of the applications that we foresee are different from each other and they need a specific implementation of the soft manipulation principle. And there is no reason to constrain this concept, this principle, in a single design. With this uh, setup, what we aim to do is uh, characterizing the, um, the way this uh, soft end interact with the environment and uh, with the object they are grasping. So uh, this setup allows to execute a repeatable impact test, either on the hand or on the hand while he's grasping an object. This is very important in order to have a, a characterization and know how, how the hand performs in these conditions. Cardo is the world's largest online-only grocer. When people place their orders online, we would like to be able to pack these things automatically. Fruit and vegetables are easily damaged, so if we have compliant hands, the chances of them imparting damage on these objects is quite small. I'm expecting to see the Soma hands on our production line in the not too distant future, maybe in the kind of three to five year time span. The idea behind these experiments is to study what approach direction and hand orientation can lead to a successful grasp. Uh, all this data is gathered into a heat map, and this heat map then will inform us which ones are the successful grasping strategies that we can use in actually in production. If you look at the way car plants use robots to handle stuff, then you'll see that they uh, engineer the environment to suit the robot. So the car parts are well constrained and presented to the robot in known positions and orientations. And if you don't do that, the robot just won't manage to handle it. So we've gone away from that completely. We don't need the objects to be in precise locations. Um, we can relax these requirements and yet still handle objects. A second main application in SOMA is the human-robot interaction. In that framework, hands are used as a social interaction medium, and that, uh, for instance, they can uh, touch a person or uh, shake a hand, giving a natural impression. Here we're working on uh, autonomous robotic grasping and some human-robot interaction. So we have this hand, which is the soft hand, with a silicon sensorized glove. So it's made of silicon and it has some sensors in it. This hand is able to sense finger touches. And so when it 
uh, senses a touch, the robot will start to move in such a way that the grasp, so the hand, is adapted to the shape of the object. And then this object will be handovered to a person, and later the same person will perform a handshake with the robot. And this handshake is like an active human-robot interaction. The robot will adapt to the movement of the person, and it will do an active handshake. It will move the person and follow the movement of the person as well. When a scientist or researcher try to find something completely new, where there is no textbook, no papers, no one explored that area, it seems on one side you feel a little bit uncomfortable because you don't have places where you can stabilize yourself. But on the other side, you are exploring something new. If there were to be one key component in SOMA that, that I would attribute the progress that we have made, it would be exactly this bringing together different people from different backgrounds and having them work on a unified idea. It was a well-planned project, well-coordinated project, but definitely the strength of this project has been the people. Competence, friendship, and the unique focus were the main factors that made SOMA a success. I think the experience that we gathered is that it's very important to integrate the people first. Once people know each other and have you know, no inhibition to talk to each other and to call each other up or to send each other an email, information can f flow much more freely. And that is really what uh, led to the, to the best results because ideas always travel on, on the legs of uh, real people. <laughs>